Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us tonight for a premiere of A Prayer, a new short film by Lades Feliciano and Talk Back. My name is Nicole Cromarty, and I'm the Director of Education and Programs at the Clifford Still Museum. This evening, Feliciano will discuss the development of this work. We will screen the short film, and following the screening, she will be in conversation with some of her collaborators. Now I'd like to introduce Laris Feliciano. She is an animator, filmmaker, collaborator, and curator. She holds an MFA in cinema production from San Francisco State University and a BA in film and American studies from Smith College. She's a current resident artist at Redline Contemporary Arts Center and was a participant in the Colorado Creative Industries Change Leader Institute. Her films have screened all over the world. Feliciano believes in the power of storytelling to both empower and incite change. Using film, video, animation, collage, and mixed media, she creates worlds where she says queerdos and weirdos are front and center. She's interested in queer identities, mixed race experiences, and complex expressions of grief. A Prayer is an experimental animation that explores how white supremacy, state violence, and civil unrest steep into our shared consciousness and our homes. Now I will pass it over to Laras to introduce A Prayer, the film that we'll be screening this evening. Thank you so much, Nicole. And I just wanna give a big thank you to Clifford Still for this um, incredible opportunity, this um, is just such a joy and yeah, such a gift. So thank you to the Clifford Still Museum. Um, yes, my name is Lattis Feliciano and I am a filmmaker and artist here in Denver. Um, and I'm just so grateful to all of you for joining us this evening. Um, as Nicole mentioned, A Prayer is a film um, that I made in response to the extreme, um, just continued repeated police violence um, that we experience and witness in this nation. Um, it was June of this year, um, just after um, all of the um, protests and unrest around George Floyd in response to his murder. And my partner was going to protests um, in Denver almost every night, coming home and having to uh, shove all of his clothes into trash bags because they were covered in tear gas. Um, and I just felt so enraged by everything that was happening that I, I needed to make something. Um, I had to. And so I started creating, I started um, sourcing sounds and video from protests from different people who had been protesting um, and kind of started piecing this together, um, but didn't really know quite where I was headed with it. Um, quite frankly, I was really focused on um, capturing both the rage I was feeling and the grief that I was feeling. Um, and then I heard the incredible song that you will all hear tonight in the film, um, and that just really catapulted the rest of the process um, and ended in the film that you'll see tonight. Um, and yeah, we'll talk more about it um, afterwards. So sit back and enjoy. So yeah, Desiree, you can go ahead and play the movie. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 
we do okay okay there's a flash bang right there and you can see the protesters are dispersing officers are firing their tear gas guns Desiree. Um, as we um, get the panelists back on and get all of their videos on, I thought I might just give a little extra context about how we started to work with Lares. We have wanted to work with her for a long time. And um, when I saw via social media, however many months ago, that she was starting to work on this film and 
was soliciting video and audio clips from the community and for folks that were participating in the protests. It just seemed like a perfect fit for us. The Clifford Stowe Museum is just a couple blocks from where a lot of the protests were happening here in Denver. Um, and in addition to having this Zoom conversation and screening, we're also um, projecting the film on loop in front of the museum right now. So. Um, if you do want to come down and see it in person after this conversation is over, feel free. We'll be screening it until 8.30 this evening. Um, so if all of the um, musicians on the call want to unmute and um, start sharing your video, uh, joining us this evening, in addition to Lades, we have Kaylin Heffernan from Wheelchair Sports Camp, Wes Watkins, aka Cosmic Slim of Wheelchair Sports Camp, and The Other Black, Corinne Coleman, aka Coco La of The Rare Birds, and Janae Donaldson, also known as Machete Mouth. Do we have everyone on now? Yes, we do. Everyone's here. Fantastic. Um, so welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Hello. Hello. Hey. Thanks for having us. We out here. Yay. In the house, in the establishment. Fire, fire. Welcome. Fire. So a lot, of, a lot as I wanted to actually start with a question for you. Um, how did you first encounter this song and why did it feel like a good fit for a prayer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, music is always something that inspires me and my work. Um, and, you know, as you can tell from the piece at the start of the film and at the end of the film, there's music that I ca that was captured at the protests. Um, and so I just felt like I knew I wanted to continue that um, that line of like protest music, like music that is just all about expressing, um, you know, that raw emotion. Um, so I was kind of like thinking about what I wanted to use. And then I saw Kaylin posted the song, um, which Kaylin will be able to, and the other folks will be able to speak to more about that process of making the song. But I heard it and I was just like, this is exactly, this is exactly how I feel. Like this is expressing everything that I am feeling, this combination of rage and grief. I'm just gonna keep coming back to that rage, grief. Um, and it just felt like the right, the right direction to go in. I reached out to these folks and was like, can I use your song? Like, what do you think? Um, and they were just incredibly supportive and encouraging um, as always. And just like such a blessing to be able to, uh, to collaborate with these brilliant minds. I love that. Um, for the musicians on the call, we, we know about um, Lada's inspiration for this film a little bit. I wonder if you could speak to your own inspiration in writing this song. Uh, sure. Uh, Wesley and Greg, uh, our drummer, started like the raw track uh, beneath everything at 187 beats per minute. So, you know, the rapper in me, and I think they kind of did it intentionally, it was like, okay, another Fuck the Police song. Uh, and there's been quite a few before this. Well, at le yeah, a, a few, at least a few. So um, this was like, a, you know, taking a jump into like a more punk rock feel, and I wrote my verse very um, directed like uh, to Paul Castaway's mom, who I had met recently, and Paul Castaway had died quite a while before I wrote it, but it's still another um, person that we lost here in Denver, and, you know, a story that, like, still happens. <coughs> so, I started the verse and it just wasn't complete. Um, and it was like this long demo take. And I started thinking about, you know, how to get it to this next level or what it's missing. And it was uh, Corinne and Janae. <laughs> and they had plenty of bars. Uh, <laughs> All the bars. They already had like a song. Um, yeah, yeah I, I remember you already had that like 
in the vault. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wrote that verse three years ago, if not, I can't remember who had passed away or who it had been. Um, Philando Castile, I think, had been the catalyst for that. And um, just kind of like my own experiences. But it was really serendipitous when Kaylin asked. I was like, yo, like, no one really wants to take this verse on. Like, every time I try and bring it up, like, people are just like, hey, I don't want to do that because, you know, that's not necessarily something I want to represent or, you know, like, weird mm -hmm. excuses for the reasons not to say the words. But um, my, uh, when Kaylin released it in June, my dad had passed away and his run-ins with the police and his run-ins with the U.S. government and how um, his life was pretty much dictated by his sentences um, that for crimes he didn't commit, it really felt like giving birth to this very rageful baby <laughs> and being like, being able to like do that out um, and him passing, um, being able to kind of like let it live somewhere else too um has really been helpful too so i'm really like um grateful that lars picked up the song and like was able to put image to it like i was bugging out like the whole last part i was like trying to stifle tears i'm like yeah man i'm still mad like <laughs> yeah we can burn this down we really should and also the fact that like I grew up on Lake Street, which is right across the street from where um, George Floyd was killed and murdered um, to see like my neighborhood burn <laughs> in such a way, like a place where, you know, I was like on a tricycle um, being a kid, like to see that like really go up in flames and then to go back and visit it after he passed away. And being able to listen to the song has been a really meaty and like strange and beautiful experience. So thank you for creating this art, Lars, and thank you for bringing me on, Kaylin and Corinne. Oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> gushing. <laughs> thank you so much, Janae. Thank you for sharing all of that. I just like appreciate you so, so much. And I'm just so grateful for all y'all. Like the the fusion of feeling is real. And I feel like for me, even though like I wasn't making this animation with y'all like right beside me, like y'all were with me. And like, I feel like this, I mean, maybe I'm speaking out of turn here, but like, I feel like this was a way for, uh, for me to grieve with y'all, if that makes yeah. sense. Like it feels like- That makes perfect sense. Yeah, like it's That's this collective- Can y'all hear me by the way? I was- Yes. Talking. Can you yes. hear me? Oh good, okay smooth that's that's absolutely how you connect with people that well that's one of the ways i mean food is amongst uh the major part of how we uh grieve and communicate with each other um but this is definitely a way to um branch out the grief and branch out um the interpretation of like how you're viewing what's going on uh with the people you know I know like when I, where I came from, uh, as far as my contribution on this track um, was from definitely like a, a non-linear point of view, you know what I mean? Um, because the rage and the, the, the effery, I'm not sure if I can cuss all the way, but the fuckery basically, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's been going on for, I mean, honestly, y'all like thousands of years, if you think about like the root the the core of you know why people are being attacked or how they're being attacked i mean this has been going on for centuries and centuries just i mean it's just right now that we're able to to all of us as a as a as a as a whole can can feel the grief you know as a as again as a whole you know because everyone's recording it and it's you know we have all this access to it but i mean it's not it's non-linear the rage is is never ending um so where i came from was definitely channeling um the people of of the now that have been that have been wrong the people of of yesterday and today that have been wrong because it's like i said it's not linear so it's it's never ending you know what i'm saying we're we're talking about people from yesterday we're still we're still making up for it today you know what i mean yeah been since you know so yeah at least from where i came from was a definitely um a point of from the ancestors and from you know just channeling everybody that's been wrong and channeling the people today 
you know what I mean, um, that are still dealing with the, you know, the, the microaggression and the, and just the little bits here and here and there, you know, um, we're always going to be ready to catch these hands, always, always, and, and catching the hands and catching the spade can, can look a lot of different ways, it doesn't always have to be like, put your dukes up, you know what I'm saying, it's definitely one of the ways, but like, like, you know, we're talking about, um, yes, never, in, you know, like we're talking about um, sharing the grief, you know what I mean, in different ways, like with our creativity, with cooking, um, channeling it in, in creative ways and channeling it in, um, in whole, and not, I don't want to say wholesome, but, I, but for lack of better words, wholesome, basically like, you know, bringing everybody together because that's, that's what's gonna advance us. That's what's gonna evolve us. We gotta evolve the vibe. <laughs> you know, we gotta, we, it's, you know, evolution is a vibe. Um, and not to sound corny, but like for real, we, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean good, bad, whatever. It just means like, okay, let's, let's keep it moving. You know what I mean? And I think 187 represents that energy of keeping it moving and continuing the rage because we got to be pissed the fuck off. I mean, if you're not pissed off, if you, I don't know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know what other feeling you're feeling. I'd like to know, but if it's not, rage is not a part of that, then I don't believe you. You know what I mean? But we can always channel it. And, uh, and in creative ways that um, that steps beyond only violence. You see what I'm saying? So, 187, fuck cops. <laughs> so I have a couple more questions for you all, but I also just wanna open it up to everyone that's participating. If you have a question for any of the artists on the Zoom call right now, just feel free to drop it in that Q&A down at the bottom of your Zoom. Um, my next question is one for each of you as individual artists. Um, I'm wondering, and you're, you're kind of starting to touch on this, but what do you feel your role as an artist is right now in this current moment that we're in? Um, it's me again. <laughs> uh, I believe, and I do think that my particular role um, in this current moment, because I, you know, I like, I'm gonna just segue, like, I like, to, I like to think that our roles are ever changing. So we're in a certain role right now, and we're doing something and we're cultivating uh, a moment right now, but that, but that isn't going to be the only moment, you know what I mean? We're going to always be, again, evolving, we're going to always be um, continuing and, and, and growing into another, into another form, like, so for me, I definitely believe, like, um, creating sanctuary and, um, you know, creating music that uh, creates an experience for people rather than, you know what I mean? It like, and when I say experience, I'm not like, okay, we're going to go on this woo trippy ride. It's like, okay, can I put this on while I'm, you know, folding my laundry or, you know, I'm hanging with my boo or I'm hanging with myself, like, you know, I'm cooking, like type stuff, you know, things that to keep us, again, moving along, keeping us motivated, keeping us, keeping our mind right, and, you know, keeping us, keeping us grounded in the, in the moments where our minds are kind of squirrely too, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, that's, that's just a part of the experience. We're going to be going all over the place, you know, so right now, I believe, like, creating sanctuary, at least for my, for my personal <sighs> everything, is to, you know, create sanctuary and create, um, uh, sonic experience, uh, you know, sonic remediation for, for everybody, including myself. Sonic remediation. I love that. Yes. 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 You do it. You do yeah. it. Thank you, love. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't know what's going on with these internet calls these days, you know. <laughs> uh, you Let's know, hear I, you, Wes. Yeah, so I think for me, the big thing that I've encountered is that we, well, I like to look at the, the cats from the past. Like, so Nina Simone, right? Nina Simone said it's the artist's job to talk about the current times. You know, we are the ones who have the power to talk about the current times. Malcolm X, Malcolm X says, well, I believe that the white man is smart enough, truly smart enough to understand how black people are feeling, really feel it. So for me, if I look at all of the cats from the past I'm, and listen to them, really listen to them, I think it's our job as artists to say the things that people are too afraid to say. Yeah, we got to be pissed off. We got to be to the streets and like 
a lot of people don't have the comfort to feel that way. And I'm not mad at them for it, but that's, this song holds a lot of importance for me in that. And I didn't even know how the content was going to go when we made the music side of it, but it holds a lot of power for me in that where finally people are listening and if people are listening, y'all are the ones I want them to be listening to. You know what I'm saying? That's all. I'm done. <laughs> Heck yeah. I'm here for it. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question, Nicole. And I'm with these folks. Um, I was, I was like trying to pull that Nina Simone quote out of my brain and you pulled, you just pulled it right out, Wes. We were like right on the same wavelength there. Um, a hundred percent. I feel like, you know, a decade ago, I was like facing off with riot gear cops and like, I'll, sh you know, I'll show up at protests and I'll do it. But like, I got a, I got a bad back and I'm just like, I got anxiety. <laughs> like I just, um, and I struggle with depression, like truly. So when it comes to like how to participate in, um, in the movement, you know, in the revolution, I feel like there are many roles in the revolution, many, many roles to be played. Um, whether like, like, uh, Corinne was saying, cooking, um, healing, all of that, making magic. Um, and making art is, is both how I, how I process the grief and anger that I'm feeling. And it's also my gift, um, to the community. Um, to, so hopefully we can, you know, collectively grief um hopefully my I, I hope that my art can be a tool for that um yeah yeah i think a lot of those things came up uh on about whether or not to release the song how to release it uh what is effective like what's taking up space and what's contributing to the momentum um and it's it's wild how this project and now it's this video too has had so many like different life times or like eras that we've already had to grieve and had to like evoke this feeling that certainly isn't new um but the timing of you know this current uprising it was like a lot of questions about how you know, I'm another one of those that's like been out in the streets for a long time and with COVID and even just like with my mental health, like I can't do it every day. Um, so there is that next step question that I think artists grapple with <laughs> constantly. It keeps us up at night um, all the time. <laughs> like what's next and how how to do it better and how to do it smarter um, and more sustainably. So there was a lot, a lot, a lot of grief uh, around releasing this uh, the week that we did and the message we were trying to get out because this was like a week when everybody's like, we support Black Lives Matter because we have to. <laughs> uh and you know it was like yeah a lot a lot of grief and and you know doing our best to like support Janae through her grief like literally during that week and like was it uh you know was it honoring her dad or was it like distracting you know like we were just grappling with so many ways to like release it if we should at all and that's why like we decided to go for it and it's a demo and like we knew that it just had to be that song um and live outside of us as a band and like as musicians um and so yeah it's bailed out a lot of people so far we've raised like nine about nine hundred dollars uh with all the uh, download uh, contributions and like feel really good about it being a forever action. And I think we've all been involved in some kind of way, uh, contributing our art to the movement. Um, and hopefully we get better and better and raise more money and kind of do this mutual aid thing that we're all still getting smarter about.
That's great. Kaylin, I wanted to ask you some more about the song and where those funds are going to, but I wanted to make sure, Janae, um, if you wanted to jump in and talk about what you feel your role is right now, that you had the space to do that. I feel like I'm bringing back stories in a way and also talking about ancestral roots and basically like immediate ancestors, like my grandmother, my father, and writing about them has been like my role right now as an artist and just trying to get, trying to sit in this area of the Bardot, right? This area of the living and the dead and kind of connecting with that area, that area um, has been the goal for me um, as an artist and also as an organizer, like, I mean, that <laughs> up until like a month ago, I was organizing, um, you know, on a more political level. So I think this art has actually helped a lot in this way in which I don't feel like I can actually express myself as an organizer. Like I can't go up to the cop or the security guard and say, yo, fuck you and your whole lineage. <laughs> and then keep my job um but like as a free agent as an, as a free artist at this moment um I'm gonna say what I want and I'm going to do what I want and I'm going to be very very vocal about those things and I think you know really um kind of losing a lot of my own personal chains and societal chains are my roles as an artist is to kind of like break these areas in which I have felt stifled or which I feel the people are stifled. So um, doing that work, either whether it's big or small is um, that right now. Oh yeah. Thanks everyone for addressing that big question <laughs> um, that everyone's thinking about right now. Um, we're getting some interest in the chat about, um, you know, where the funds are going from the song and um, how we can access it. I think actually someone just went ahead and put the Bandcamp link in our chat. Um, but would, would one of you be willing to talk about where the funds are going from that song? Yeah, everything's going directly 100% to Colorado Freedom Fund which is a super dope um, abolition organization effort to free them all. And um, they pay for a lot of people's ransom every day. They would no they would not otherwise be able um, to pay for their freedom. Uh, just on some, some people have been bailed out uh, since we've released the song for $5 and they would have sat, continued to sit in jail for nights um, for not having like a $5 bail. So uh, they're out. Uh, Elizabeth Epps uh, co-founded the, or solely founded uh, Colorado Freedom Fund and is somebody that I've always um, looked to um, for for ways to get involved and like I always want to take her lead in everything abolition because she's been on it um, and she's been doing the work for a really long time and bails so many people out a day um, and has had to navigate the system uh, herself um, for being harassed and assaulted and uh, terrible things in jail herself and then um, they work um, on a policy level. They were a big uh, push to get the immunity um, overturned, which did happen in the same time span of the song, this song being released. Um, so yeah, uh, Colorado Freedom Fund's definitely on the front lines of, of abolition work here in Colorado and Denver. Thank you so much for that. So if you go to the link in the chat at the Bandcamp and download the song, those funds are still going to Colorado Freedom Fund. It's great. 
Um, and then as far as the film is concerned, um, just like always, this program is being recorded and will be available on the Clifford Stills YouTube page in a couple days once we get it edited. So the film and the song, of course, will be embedded in this program, but um, I wanted to pass it to you, Lada, is how can people access your film after today? Yeah, thanks so much, Nicole. So after tonight's premiere, I will be um, unlocking the Vimeo and it'll be available on my website. So I'll drop that in the chat here um, and please share it far and wide. I want folks to, to see it, feel it, hear the song, um, download the song, donate to Colorado Freedom Fund. Um, yeah, I'm just so stoked. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I don't know how closely the, the panelists are following the chat, but um, Patricia says the intelligence and sincerity of the artist is inspiring and gives me hope, faith in the future, which is, um, yeah, kind of the best thing you could ask for in doing a public program. Um, so I think we're going to close with that. Um, and thank you for sharing your website, Larez, that's now in the chat as well. So you can follow her there and all the amazing things that she's doing. Um, thank you so much to all of you um, for sharing your work with us and your thoughts about this music and this incredible film um, and all that you're doing in the community. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank everybody. you. Oh. Love you all. Bye. Love you Bye. all. Love you so much. Bye. 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 I'm going to go take it out. <laughs>